Hello everyone, how are you? I missed you guys. Well, I've been doing a lot of different things here. There's a lot of work here and so uh, I'm caught up a lot so I'm going to catch up a lot with you guys in the videos. Thanks you all for hanging in there. Uh, Drew's going to come back here in a minute and we're going to go over your eyes. And so be prepared for those. Get you a pen and paper and we'll go over them. Now, remember I kept, yeah. Quick question before you sure. get started. Mm -hmm. Are you started? Uh, is yeah. with you? Mm, no. Oh, go ahead. You have a question? For Drew. Uh, oh, for Drew. No, he's not here. Okay, so. uh, Remember, we were doing four questions. And I, w I was a little, you know, slow at getting them for you. So I got four new questions for you. Pretty easy. But four new questions for the Facebook uh, fans. Facebook. You healers on the Facebook. What is the pH of the blood supposed to be? And you might, um, how low can it go before death occurs? That's a good one. So, what's the pH of the blood supposed to be, and what, how low can we go before death occurs? Now, uh, also, what is the pH of the urine? That would be question number two. What would, what would we want the pH of the urine to be, and why would we want to see cloudy urine? And how does that relate to the pH? That's a good question. Yeah, okay. Now, another question. Uh, when are the two times that you have symptoms? Now, the problem with this question is, is I'm about to answer it for you. Because this is something I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, but that's going to be one of the questions. If there's more you can add to that one after our discussion, then we'll come back to that one. And the fourth one uh, what are the main, the four main processes? And I think I might have gave this to you the last time, though. The four main processes that the body has to go through to be well. These four main processes. And I think it's worthy of always keeping these four main processes in mind. Last time, only one of you call, uh, made an answer. But let's see what you come up with. These are simple questions, and I'm going to make the next four real hard. Now, but there's nothing here real hard, is there? It's just real, it's just fairly easy there. You know, um, I'm, when I get into the eyes here, I want to, I'm going to go over these weaknesses for you. And I'm going to be talking about the lymph system com with these weaknesses. Dr. Jensen didn't identify so much the lymph system in the body as much as he could have, but he did so much, so much. And I think that the the bottom line is we're more lymphatic thinkers than probably any of the practitioners in the past in that we understand that system more, we understand acids more, and what the gig is to get in and get them out. Whether one maintains these high-level diets or not, you know, but to, to have your success, you have to. There's just no question about it. So uh, it's important to understand, though, when we start detoxing someone, and I've had that occasion the last couple of weeks, and this one girl in particular, and she uh, did not, uh, was not a client. She just had heard about us, either on YouTube or somewhere. And she started detoxing. She ordered her some formulas and started detoxing. Well, her liver enzyme shot way up, and then she ended up in the uh, in a medical doctor's office, who freaked and said she needs to go to the hospital right now because she's in liver shutdown. She needs to have her liver transplanted, blah, 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 blah. So she came in our office with the blood work and everything, and I said, you know, this is just the, uh, the lymph system and what's going on in your liver. And I said, have you ever had any hepatitis? And she said, yes, I have. And I said, well, that's interesting. So I took a picture of her eyes, and when I got her eyes back, they had, she had a liver and a gallbladder lesion, now, or lacuna. And around these, and I'm going to show you this when we get to the eyes, just what Dr. Jensen discovered was that whenever you have these weaknesses, you have a reduced blood and lymph flow within these areas. And I used to think, well, you know, it's possible, but it really is. When you take a look at the lesions on the eyes, you can really see where the lymph system is backed up, almost as if it is locked, that organ or those tissues are locked in a very acid bowl of soup that continues to break it down. So, uh, with all the safety mechanisms that the body uses, from cholesterol to calcium to edema to taking any base or alkaline electrolyte to fight that, that is the body still holds that back. When we go in and start pulling on that lymph, 
everything explodes. What's there? Remember in one of the, uh, the issues with uh, healing crisis is that you experience the same symptoms that you've had before. So when are the two times we experience the same symptom? Very important to understand that. And this is what the medical doctors have to understand. When you're detoxifying someone, and let's say they have uh, MS or, and I think I told you about a case with um, uh, scleroderma, uh, what, what happens? And these symptoms can roaring back on these people. Thought they thought they'd just gotten worse and worse and worse. It isn't, is it? No. And it wasn't a week or two later, these, both of these people were diagnosed free of MS and of scleroderma. And yet, one or two weeks previously, the symptoms were roaring back. To a medical doctor, they would have went, oh my God, this person's deep trouble, da 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 To us, we know why, don't we? Because we're pulling those weaknesses out. We're pulling these acids out. We're opening these doors. We're bringing the sunshine into the body, both magnetically and chemically. We're bringing the light in there. And, and so you're going to see these type of symptoms. For those that are going through this, realize that. And for those that the healers don't freak out. Because you have to realize, and this is the value of iridology I get for all of us, and the ability to see why a person has a symptom in a certain place. So Drew's here, and so I think uh, I'll come back either tomorrow, and I'll, I'll record to catch up on these questions here, and then we'll do the eyes yeah. today yeah. and uh, get that caught up, and um, so we'll be in good shape there. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, hang tight there. Matter of fact, let me uh, get these two. All right. You know what? Let's start out, Drew. Let's start out with uh, with these two again because I want to show these again. Now, remember the the lymph system in an eye, and we're going to show you here when you're looking at an eye, and we want to go back to this for those that are just tuning into this. But an eye is made up of a pupil which you see back through to the retina, then you have all these fibers. Uh, below that are the rods and cones. But all these fibers make up the eye here. Notice when with this eye up above here that there's something different between the one below, and that something different is obvious. Very thick white matter in the eye here. What is this thick white matter? Why would this eye have thick white matter if it's a homo sapien and this doesn't? What's the difference? And so this is a dairy farmer from Upper New York that has an ice cream manufacturing business. And this is a, a, these were both, by the way, 84-year-old people when I took their pictures. This gentleman had a cancer and this lady had nothing but a few little things. And so now she's in her 90s and quite healthy and I don't know. This guy didn't like the fact that I didn't like milk. So he never came back. But I got his picture, and that's all I care about. Look at that. What a great way to show you somebody's lymph system. Now, let me show you a di varying degrees of that. As you begin to see more white develop in an eye. So this stage is, will move into this stage, more white, more white. Now, we talked about the cholerate, that which is um, around the pupil on the outside, the GI tract cholerate. And we've also, and this eye shows a perfect stomach ring. See that perfect circle around the pupil is a stomach ring. You should not see the stomach ring in a healthy environment. The more acidic, you'll start to see this turn hazy. And as the stomach deteriorates, this hazy look will start to turn darker. Then the hydrochloric acid goes down. And then the acid starts chewing on the stomach. And then doctors say it's because you have low hydrochloric acid. Well, let me tell you, the reason you have low hydrochloric acid is the lymph system, and the lymph system is going to continue to chew your stomach on up. So giving hydrochloric acid would not be the answer, would it, when the stomach's already acidic? Why would you give an acid on top of an acid? That's oncology, and they're soon to get their, their, their karma kick. But you see this thick white rope here again, and I just want to cover it one more time. This thick white rope around this cholerate, this differentiated area of the GI tract, the gut, uh, and the rest of the cells. And that thick white is interstitial lymphatic constipation, and that is malabsorption. And you'll get a little brown malabsorption ring right around the pupil, and you see it in this case as you see it with this. And you can correlate this everywhere you go. 
Now to show you that on a picture, and we'll use a white, the right side to give an example to this. Is this going to be doable? Mm -hmm. Perfect. So you see, this was the stomach ring in that eye, perfect circle around the pupil. Immediately around the pupil lies the GI tract. Large bowels on the outside of the eyes and the, and the uh, small bowel on the inside of the uh, 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 eyes or the pupils. And then you see all your organs and glands around and then your lymph node bed is toward the skin. The skin is always on the outside as it is of the body and then just in is your vascular and your lymph nodes. And you will see, we'll, we'll show you these lymph nodes as they swell and what that looks like. So let's, uh, I want to show you one more stage of this as we're going through here. Here's a more advanced stage. Sorry, Drew. Here's a more advanced stage here where now we went into white was, sub, was acute, yellow is subacute, and then brown is chronic. There are these four stages. Acute, which is the beginning of inflammation, the beginning stages of pain and swelling. It's the beginning stages of acidosis. We start to have pain and a symptom from that. Suppress the symptom by pharmac with pharmaceuticals, and you generally do not know that area is in trouble until it's in the chronic or degenerative stages. It, it just goes silent. It's suppressed. And, and, and But the body keeps adding acids to the mix day after day after day. So this is more of an advanced uh, level of weakness from this. This is a, a little more advanced from this to the point where it took this person's eye and made it almost totally brown. Notice, however, you can see blue underneath these nerve rings. That's a blue eye. Important to understand those just from the viewpoint of what color does this person's eye have. And there are some people you can't identify. It's just they're too lymphatic up to, to get a, an accurate discussion on their color. You have to detoxify them. And this is where Dr. Jensen iridology differs from German iridology. Eyes change. Matter of fact, would you do me a favor while I'm just, uh, uh, I think it's Zygafus, the magician and his wife, could... Could you just ask them to pull their chart? I'm going to show them some befores and afters, and I'll, I'll talk about you. Hey, hang on. Let me, I'll tell you what you do. Home in on, home in on this eye. This is Denicia. Home in on her eye here, and I'll talk to her while you do that. Could we? Mm -hmm. That looks like the right eye. And I'll get to the left when you get back. Well, it's perfect enough where you can put the other one on top. It is, mm -hmm. but it's holding it. Oh. See, that's that's the problem, getting it to stay. Now, wait a minute. Nope. Show me it right there. Are we good? Now, this is Denicia. Let's see. Uh, uh, I was wondering if you would have a chance to quickly take a look at my eyes. I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. I'm 32-year-old female. had a breast cancer in July 2011. Oh, crap. Two surgeries with some lip nodes out and four rounds of chemo. Girl, what's going on, girl? After that, I stopped. Was supposed to take eight rounds plus radiation plus five years on tamoxifen and turned into alternative treatment. So far, so good, but a lot of detoxifying ahead of me. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you for the positive vibes there, dear. Sorry for your issues. Now, take a look here, sweetheart. I don't know what side your breast cancer is on. This is your uh, right breast right here. Not only do you have a big weakness. See that darkness in the right breast area? That's a, that's a weakness in that area, and there's lymph stagnation in that area. Now, notice how everything keeps going into this bowel cholera. All these fibers lead to the pupil. All these fibers lead to the bowel cholera, to the GI tract. This is where Jensen, N.W. Walker, and a lot of these people realize that everything is tied to the gut and that the gut has always been the center. So you've got charts out there by N.W. Walker, charts out there by Dr. Jensen showing these. Uh, I think I've got them hanging on the wall out there. We'll have them at school. By the way, the school, we only have a couple more weeks, and we have some space if anybody wants to come. But uh, we'll show you these charts. But the thing is, is that it all is tied together so much. And then you, of course, have the kidneys. So let's look. Here's 6 o'clock straight down. There's your right leg. See that right leg? A lot of weaknesses in the knee there, also below and also in the femur. So you have a weakness, sweetheart, in your right leg here. Here right beside it is the kidney. See all that? 
those dark areas, those are the kidneys, and right up there is the adrenal gland right on top. What's all this orange stuff? According to German iridology, what is that? Yeah, this is all sulfur, and you've got a lot of sulfur in there, and you've had it for years, because look, look at how the sulfur moves to the lymph node. See this out here in the lymph node? A lot of pictures we show you, the sulfur is around the pupil. And here's a good one right here to show you where the sulfur is around the pupil. In time, in time, the sulfur is pulled to the lymph nodes because don't we have to visit a lymph node before we go out through the urine or however we go out through the skin? Isn't there a lymph node bed we have to hit? You betcha. Why do we have to hit lymph nodes before we leave the body? Waste and things like that. Perfect. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. We, we, and this is a perfect, perfect way that iridology shows this, as how it's taking this sulfur to the lymph nodes. Why? The lymph nodes are full of what? Bacteria, unless you've been on a lot of antibiotics, and then you put yourself in jeopardy. And then, of course, it's full of macrophages, which what? Terminate cells. So we have nodes that are designed to get rid of damaged cells, a.k.a. cancer cells or any mutated cells that the body feels it has to terminate. This is why we find cancer cells on lymph nodes. Hello! The problem with that is the drainage of that lymph node to the outside world. That's the problem. And that leads for uh, a, a backed up lymph node, which it's possible that the lymph node itself probably could become cancerous. Now, kidneys. Now, if we swing around here, here's your hip. A lot of lymph. See how thick that lymph is? What color is her eyes? That's a blue eye. To show you a brown eye for reference, see the difference? See all the green and the yellow? That's a blue eye. And the green and yellow, uh, the green actually comes from orange. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Oh, no. Matter of fact, let's see if I have a. Now we'll do this. Now you notice, look at all these lacunas, look at all these, and most of them, see, look at how big this collar it is, look how big this bow is, and look how small it is on her. See, there's, there's just different sizes there. Some people speculate it's the size of the bowels themselves, that you have bigger diameter bowels. Uh, I don't know. We're good? All right. Keep moving that around, sir. Okay, so here's hip. Now we're, let me see, where are we here? Yep, yep, yep. Uh, hip. We also, this is a uh, ovary. Uh, this is gallbladder in there, liver. Need to, you really need to make health, uh, Denise, uh, you need to make healthier focus here. Stomach. You've got bowels that are prolapsed here. Uh, the stomach looks black in places here, so you've got to clean the stomach out. This causes nothing but bloaty, gassy problems. High candida can lead to depression and all kinds of problems. Look at all these nerve rings, sweetheart. It's coming from these adrenals up here. So this is an eye of someone that really needs to get their health together. This is the thyroid parathyroid, a weakness in the throat, upper neck. And as you move the back around here, you see little weaknesses down her back all the way to the lower back. Then you see a bladder here that's not really happy, a vaginal wall area that's not happy. You should be douching here with some heal all tea and, and strengthen and clean this vaginal wall here. Real, real important. And the skin could use a little bit of help too. You're locked in. Your lymph is locked in. Your skin, everything's just locked in there, dear. And this is a picture of her uh, left eye. Now, you're seeing a better side on this side. Could be the coloration. This is why having appropriate pictures of eyes is so important because you could lose a little. Now, you got a little yellowing here in the sclera. You definitely could clean the liver gallbladder out, no question. You got a lot of blood vessels here that are all red. It means a lot of acidosis here. And each one of these blood vessels obviously relate to the tissues in the body. This is sclerology. You can get a book and study that if you want. Now again, here we go with that orange around the collar. It means there's malabsorption, there's, there's bloaty gassy feeling in this poor lady. But see this real dark? This is called a radii solaris. See how dark that is and how it goes straight up into the brain? But it comes from the stomach area. Then you know that's genetics. And this is right through your pituitary, honey. Right through your pituitary. We come down here, we got another uh, uh, 
lacuna here, but these are going to be brain lesions if you're not careful, honey. This also goes back to the cerebellum, the equilibrium, dizzy, vertigo center right here. We're close to the left ear and the shoulder here. Then we got some congestion in both lungs. But you see how your bowel is, is up, down, spastic, prolapsed. So parathyroid might be, might be considered. This big lob of, of mucus here is in your parathyroid gland, and this weakness is in the thyroid. Back looks better on this side till we get to the lower back, and you pick up this kidney, rectal wall, vaginal wall, bladder. So they're, 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 they're not super deep weaknesses, but they're not super light weaknesses. So you really just kind of have to make your body the health because you got good strong genes in most of the body, but you really need to open up these lymph nodes, get this sulfur out of here. So obviously we're going to go the route of a GI broom, of uh, stomach and bowel capsules, lymphatic one capsules. We're going to go into the kidneys, a couple of kidney formulas. We're going to go into the endocrine glands, pop up those adrenals, take care of this, uh, this pituitary because not only do you have a weakness in the thyroid, you have a weakness in the pituitary. Both of those control each I mean the pituitary controls the thyroid and it's already involved so you're if you're having thyroid problems you're going to have to fix both of those things but I would get in here with upper circuit brain and nerve in the future clean my sinuses to clean the sinuses you have to clean the bowel then the sinuses will drain and then we can get these fixed up here and then everybody's good but pretty good genes but a lot of lymph going on here this should be a blue eye this eye should be like this and believe it or not, you can get it there. I want to show you, we're talking about befores and afters here. And uh, let me show you a good case where a lady came into me. Her husband is a famous magician. He's another David Blaine. It's, he's unbelievable. But she came in with extreme, extreme head pressure. And that you're seeing a lot more of that now. What would cause extreme head pressure? Blood? Is that a blood pressure problem? No, her blood pressure is low. Well, how could you have pressure in your brain? Huh? Yeah. And, and, and have low blood pressure. Because it isn't the blood, is it? It's the lymph. And that's what they don't get. I want to show you some neat befores and afters. Let me just set her stuff over here. I want to show you, you might have to raise the camera, what do you think? Mm -hmm. Can you do that okay? Mm -hmm. Now, let me show you, see how bad that is? Look at that stuff, look at that thick stuff, look at that. Unbelievable, thick lymph, these are blue eyes, look at that stuff. But let me show you her first picture. Take a look. Wow. Now take a yeah. look. Yeah. You okay. see any difference? If you don't see changes, you're going to put on a pair of glasses. This is the first picture I took. Uh, that's back in uh, January uh, 10. Here is a year later almost, November 10. There, begin to see a lot more. Mm -hmm. See a lot more blue. And this was taken January 12. Look at the difference. Less congestion in the oh. Yeah. Oh, major. Mm -hmm. Now, she's getting thick thick now she's all fruit and has been she's probably off of it a little bit by now but we got the pressure out of her mostly and but oh. the other problem so much lymph in the head that she's getting buckets of thick mucus out and when she gets it out her brain goes numb really oh yeah wow. oh but you know you got to realize this thick mucus occupied space in your mm -hmm. brain putting pressure on the brain, which is the central nervous system. So when you break that loose, you're going to have a void. So th this is a big deal. Let me show you her left side. Back in 10. All right. Let's look at her uh, one year later. Big difference. Wow. Take a look. Yeah. Take a look here. Now, a year later from that, <laughs> huge difference. Blues are coming back. You, blues coming back. Blues yeah. in, man. You've got to realize the eyes change. Drop this, this German iridology bull crap and get realizing that the reason these healers don't see any changes is they're not healing their clients. I've been to Europe. I've been over there. Had a clinic in Portugal. Where I know their consciousness. And I'm telling you, you've got to get with this because look at the changes that this eye made. 
big changes. You can see it in the blue. Look real close. You can see these lesions closing up. They will close up. You see healing lines in them. This is exactly what uh, Jensen was talking about. Look at how the pupil's getting smaller. Look at this. Look at the difference. Huge differences. There's huge differences. So I just wanted to show you that because very impressive. I love that. And I feel that if you keep iridology appropriate and honest, eyes change. And they would change. Or why would you believe in iridology at all? I, I feel that if you don't believe eyes change, you shouldn't be an iridologist. I, I, I'm pretty strong thinking that way because it would be stupid to believe in the philosophy of iridology and what, what has been discovered by Lynn Lahr and everybody else through the years and then to have someone say, well, eyes don't change. Eyes don't change because you don't heal. I had a girl, lady in California hit me hard like that. Oh, yes, we, we detoxify deep into the tissues. Oh, do you? Then how come you don't see any changes in the eye? Well, because the eyes don't change. Oh, really? Uh, you would have told the father of iridology that, Jensen. Now, this, this is Zoe. Uh, I thought I went over this, Zoe, so I apologize if I haven't. I, there's two eyes I want to go over with. I can't hardly read them. This one's better, so I'll go over this eye. Uh, Zoe, I don't know which person this eye is. Let me see here. But I'll, I'll go over this eye first. This is obviously a a right eye and a left eye. So let's look at this. This is the bowel cholera. See how thick that is? Now notice this brown substance. This isn't orange, this is brown. This is a chronic bowel. Chronic bowel. There could be some sulfur in here as well because this yellowing is a little orangish look so there could be some sulfur but ultimately this is heavy, heavy lymph stagnation in the bowel wall. See how thick that is around the bowel wall here? And then see how dark this brown is around the pupil? That's chronic stomach and bowels. Now the rest of the eye looks beautiful. But this is a genetic past, there's no question. This took a lot of generations for these eyes to do this. And this is all foods that break down the colon, from proteins to dairy products. But I have to look out in here and say that this girl uh, got rid of, if she was a dairy consumer, it wasn't heavy because this would be a lot worse. Um, Anyway, this is pretty good genes except for the gut. Here's that right kidney. See how dark that is right in there? That's that right kidney. You got to take care of that kidney. If this is Zoe's eyes or somebody's, but you got to take care of that right kidney. This is a little groin appendix. Uh, here's your hip on the right side. Uh, this is a pancreas, gallbladder. You got both of them involved. Now, you see this lesion? Do you see the thick white or yellow around each one of these two little spots? See these two little bitty spots? And you notice it looks a little thicker around that spot? That's a weakness in the pancreas where the lymph system isn't moving hardly at all. Well, in time, that lymph just sitting there, acidosis after acidosis, after a while, the cell membrane wall will break down and it'll be intracellular, or you can't even get, cells can't even discharge waste through their membrane. Now you have intracellular acidosis, now you have a, a, a cell on the road to mutation. Again, this is back, mid-back, this is throat, a lot of mucus in the throat area here, got to come out here. This is the tonsils, not real happy if you still have them. Can't hardly see up in the brain here, dear, but uh, up here we're in the uh, right ear and right mastoid ear. If there's any indication, that might be an issue there with equilibrium and dizziness. Left side, obviously, look at the two sides, guys. You can see that this left side isn't filtering as good as the right. Take a look at the difference in kidney weakness. Here's the right. Here's the left. See how big that is? That's a big lacuna. And you see that thick white, that white rim around that, that whole kidney weakness. That kidney is being locked with lymph, and it'll chew. When it starts chewing on the kidney, that's when you look at the blood work, and you see your creatins move from 0.4 or 0.5 on up to the 0.6s and 0.7s, 0.8s, and then you're going into the 1s, and then you're heading toward dialysis. And these kidneys, if you don't take care of them, are going to be really problematic to you. This is, uh, this is very important. Again, mid-back. A lot going on mid-back, dear one, which is more uh, lungs. Uh, 
And then you look up here, this is upper neck and getting into the throat, a lot of congestion in the throat. This could be perceived throat maybe in, moving into the thyroid, a lot of congestion in the thyroid gland. If your thyroid suppressed, there might be a little genetics here, but a lot of congestion in that. Here's a little swelling in lymph node up in the upper lobe of the left lung. But not bad. Not bad. Good strong genes. You got to really focus on that bowel. That's a good GI broom, lymph, stomach and bowel capsules, lymphatic one capsules. Really got to clean that gut up because your rest of your body isn't so bad. Fix those kidneys and adrenals because you're going to have to to fix this bowel. And then you'll be in good shape. Now, here's another picture that they sent. And Zoe, I don't know if this is you or your family or whatever. Here's another picture. You can see the difficulty I have in seeing that picture. These are drug deposits. Uh, real dark eye. What color do we think these eyes should be? What do you think, Drew? Blue? Brown? Purple? Blue. I'm saying blue. I'm going to guess blue. blue. Here's one where you want to detox them a little bit before you guess too much because you might freak them out thinking they're blue and they're going, wait a minute, these are brown. Some people get freaked out that way. Now, what scares me about this eye is the, the, the white ring here. This white ring is the cholesterol ring, scurf rim, cholest I mean the cholesterol ring. Well, they do have a, a scurf rim, which is the skin. They have weak skin here, no question. This I don't like at all. This is strokes coming here, and this is the, uh, if this is the right eye, okay, if it was over here, this would be the left eye, that would be the heart area, but you see it here on the left side here, I can't see up in her brain there, but you can imagine this is going right on up into the brain area, since the sinuses look real dark up here, and of course you could just slice across the pupil, and this is all upstairs. Now look how little the pupil is, and there, there's a lot of light here, so that could just be a sheen, but see how you're getting a sheen on the pupil? That kind of correlates with this uh, cholesterol ring, and that that's a cataract. And so when you, cataracts are cholesterol. Well, why would you get cholesterol and plaquing in the pupil? Acidosis, look at the head area, full, dark, dark, very dark. The bowel, very dark, very dark. So there's a lot of lymphatic work and, and should speed that up. Mm -hmm. I would probably give, if this person has high blood pressure, I'd definitely give the cayenne garlic for extended periods of time. But I'd also use upper circulation, hopefully in keeping from stroking. But this person needs a lot of lymphatic work, skin, get the skin vitalized. Here is the uh, right kidney right here. And look at that adrenal sitting there, real chronic right there. Now that could be a sore spot, which is a genetic spot, but this is right into the groin area. And the left eye, here's the back, the lower back, mid back, uh, uterine, bladder, a little bit of weakness there. So when you have an eye like this, you just make your life, your, you know, your health. That, that's what you do. You just make it part of your persona, and that's what you are. That's what you do. And then you get this cholesterol out of here and get your back into a, a state of some degree of health. Now, this is from Sam. Hey, Sam. Not bad pictures. Some of you guys are doing real good with your pictures. And they're just hard to read. And we just, we're not going to do a lot more. We're just trying to, to help you out as much as can. But... What I want you guys to get used to is reading your own. And that's why I'm doing this. To help you not only read your own, but your lovers, your, your mates, uh, your, your, your family, and, and your clients. Don't try to read more into this than is. That's some of the things I see people doing because it's such an exciting science. Iridology is an exciting science because it's a window into the world of the human body. A science that's really cool. And yet you have people just, just you know, saying bizarre things that, that really tears down the reputation of that. You know, Jensen worked very hard to build a reputation around iridology. And I certainly have too. I hate to see that just decayed by by propaganda and bullcrap. You know, keep this science pure and nice. It's a look into the body. It's, a, it's a, the most helpful science we have, in my opinion. Well, these fibers are pretty close for the most part, so look at that. 
We definitely have a choleric problem. We definitely have a stomach and a GI tract problem, don't we? And this is common. You're going to see this again and again and again. So obviously, the GI tract in man is in a bad shape. Well, we know that because GI tract cancer was number one for generations. We know that some of the greatest healers in the world, Jensen and N.W. Walker, and some of these guys that laid the, especially the Walkers and the and those people that laid the raw food groundwork. Jensen didn't lay a raw food ground work, which he should have. That would have helped him maintain his, his health because he had strong genes. Uh, sometime if I can find his eyes, I'll bring them in here and show you Dr. Jensen's eyes. I have, them, I have them from way back. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the practitioners working for me stole them one time, but I think I have another set. She stole a lot of my uh, charts. I couldn't believe it, a female. Generally, you can trust a female. But anyway, uh, this is the, uh, the kidneys here, not so bad. I mean, it's right in here. There's a little weakness right there. Uh, here's the leg. And you can kind of see these kind of, these weaknesses here in the groin to the hip. And whenever the kidneys are backed up, you know the hips backed up, the legs going to go, the knees, the hips, all these things are going to go. And we start to get into the bladder. Look at the bladder right there. That's not happy. See that? And then you see that white there? That's the lymph not moving well in the bladder. And then they're going to be diagnosed with what? Interstitial cystitis. Why? Because the lymph system in the wall of the bladder is backed up, breaking down, biting, chewing, burning the bladder wall. Now, what drug would you want to take to get rid of that? Nothing. You've got to get your lymph filtering. You've got to get your lymph moving. Yeah, this is out in the throat area. This is a throat, sore throat. When you see these, you know it's going to bring on a sore throat. Here's a big time uh, thyroid, thyroid and parathyroid here. A lot of congestion in the tonsil area. As we shift over here, we're moving around the hip area. We're moving around the pancreatic area. A lot of congestion in the pancreas and gallbladder, maybe even a little weakness in the gallbladder. This is the upper rib cage right here on the right side. Here is the lower lung on the pattern. But not bad. This is a strong person, Sam. You can get your health back pretty easy. Uh, get that bowel cleaned up. Get, I can't tell. It's pretty. It's kind of a yellowish orange, and with the coloration here, that could be more orange. It obviously has a sulfur hue to it. Here's the left eye here. It does, uh, it does appear more orange than the camera. Does it? Yeah, so that's what we're dealing with. And yeah. I think that's what we're dealing with. See, oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's what I think we're dealing with here is sulfur around here. But you notice that this is typical where we have the GI tract in a very chronic or a subchronic stage, a lot of congestion. And that's why you see mucus in people's stools that when they start detoxifying. It's all this coming out of here. And you need that for what? purpose. That's number two on the question that I ask you, what's the four phases of health? This is number two phase, and what might that phase be? Now, this is the uh, either the hip right here, probably, maybe a tad bit. When you see areas like this, you want to make sure they're either in the bowel wall or on the outside of the bowel wall. Now look at this one. This one is actually on the outside. And notice how the bowel wall goes in like a V here. And this looks like something that shot into the bowel wall like a bullet. That's a genetic pass. And it actually came off of the bowel wall. Remember, this, 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 this colon is part of the embryonic trunk. Remember the little tadpole trunk in the, when you were an embryo? That, that came off of here. This is in the lower lung and the lower bronchial trunk feeding that lung. And that's a weakness that's come down the family tree and just, you know, spawned off the, off the gut tissue here. Up in the brain, you got a few spots here and see the white around those spots. So you want to get up in the brain and get that lymph drained. Well, you have to clean the bowel up first, get the sinuses and all this will come loose. And then do some upper circuit brain and nerve and heal these spots up here. They're not real deep, but they're, the lymph is backed up and could make them deeper. A lot of uh, congestion and some weaknesses in your cerebellum, which is again the equilibrium center, dizzy center, vertigo center of the body. This is your back here. You got uh, some upper back, of course, some lower back. But not bad. Not bad. This is the, oh no, this is the, the left eye. I'm sorry. This would be your back over here. And this would be your throat. Sorry, I apologize for that. This is the left eye. 
God, I'm doing the uh, Alzheimer's okay. thing, aren't I? Is it time time for me to go? Upper circuit. Upper circuit, brain and nerve, right? Yeah. I've been pumping those. And adrenal. Oh, yeah, that's right. i got to hit those adrenal. I think I'm ready for the farm. I'll give you the next <laughs> protocol. You will? Yeah, yeah I'll do yeah, okay. it. All right, yeah. You, you make me a protocol? Yeah, one day. I can use yeah. it. I'm sure I can do it. Quit it. <laughs> You're always writing protocols out there. All right. Uh, this is Michelle. Blue. Michelle, my. You think blue? Yes. Yeah. Hmm. Blue. Hmm. Yeah, I, I'm going to go with blue. You're going to go with blue? I will. Um, but look at the top. I'm going to freak. Well, that real quick. if you didn't see that. Mm hmm. Yeah, That's if you didn't why. see that, you wouldn't think blue. I'm not. I'm. I'm going to hold my reservation, Drew. I am because this is a. This looks like a light brown eye to me. I don't see enough in here to warrant, except that one spot. Could be a lighter shading. I know. So all right. So we'll see. <laughs> hey, but let's work. That person just needs to work on it. That person uh, really needs to. Months from now. Now, what system does this person need to work on? Just looking at this eye. Yeah. Oh, that's obvious. Limp, 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 limp. Even if it was a true brown eye, which I think it is, the true color of the eye is light brown. The nerve rings always shows you the true color. And with the nerve rings, which are these rings here, this appears when the adrenals are weak, uh, enough in, in genetics to where the myelin sheaths begin to decay on the, on the nervous systems. They begin to weaken, and these nerve rings appear. Uh, with that, then, you can have the shingles. You can have all kinds of neurological experiences because of this weakness. And, of course, any weakness in nature is attacked. So a viral is, job is to uh, adhere to a weakness. That's its job. That initiates an immune response and takes care of the weakness. This is nature. Now, real thick up in the head area, sinus is real thick. And if you look at this left eye, holy moly, this is real dark, real thick. This is, I need to move my lymph yesterday eye. Real thick here, real dark here. Here's the bowels, and in the bowels you have a multitude of weaknesses, particularly across this transverse colon. Here is the pituitary in a degenerative state, forehead, oh wait, yeah, left eye. This is the forehead up here. you got some things going on up in your, uh, Michelle, in your forehead here, the left side. Uh, this is the ear on the left side. Uh, these are a little, this is the bowel, shows weaknesses in the bowel and some in the stomach. Now we come down here. Here's your adrenal, sweetheart, and they are not happy. See how dark? See how dark that adrenal gland is? See how black that is? That adrenal gland is not happy. And that that thick, see that thickness around the adrenal gland? That's the lymph sitting there burning that adrenal gland up. And you can tell this is where a glandular would be very important for this girl because this is a very uh, and, and Michelle uh, also 15 years ago. Well, she's how old is she? Oh, she's 40 years old. And I've been a cheese and bread lover. No kidding. <laughs> Michelle, it shows, honey. Uh, she went raw vegan a year ago, fruit all day and a salad at night. Oh, she's a good woman here. Because before my period, I couldn't sleep well and I would get really hungry. Well, no kidding here. This is, uh, Shell, you really got to get some, uh, yeah, really bloaty. She, uh, with her periods heavy and, and, and great, she has salt and bread cravings. So what do you have here? Salt, adrenals, big time. She's craving what her adrenals can't balance in the body, which is sodium. On the second thing, she's craving bread. Why would she be craving bread? Is this a candida eye? Absolutely. There's enough orange in here. Now, it could just be the armature to throw this orange off and it's really brown like this. That is possible. You have to consider the, the, the amount of light going in an eye here. But... Uh, I, I, with, with a, a bread craver, you know she's got fungal problems. Well, you're going to have fungal problems anyway when you have weak adrenals. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Let's make this the, the fourth or fifth question, since I've already answered some of the questions. Let's make this a question to the Facebook people. I see blue. You see blue, huh? I'm gonna okay. Uh, well, I'm, all right. Well, well, I mean, yes, that does a little, a, a I little look that rings, way. I see the rings though, and yeah. the light. I do see where you're coming from, the light brown, but I see it. Well, here's the one. Well, it could just be the armature too. Because this, on that. the camera picks up pretty well. Absolutely. Why? Why would there be a bread craving 
why why would there be a bread craving in someone? And with that, what role would the adrenal glands play in that craving of bread? Mm. So we know, and that's for the Facebook people. Let's see if they can come up with that. Of course, we already know why, right? Hint, sugar metabolism. Okay. Now, this is the knee and the leg on the uh, left side. This is all left side. See how this is the bowel? This is probably a ballooning of the, uh, the sigmoid flexure, the, the part. This is the rectal area here. So there's a weakness in the rectal area, but I think it's also in the rectal flexure is ballooned out there as well, and it's real dark in there. There's a lot of cancers in this area, sweetheart. You get in here and get this cleaned up here. I probably would do some low-level insertions of heal all T, not enough to, to create an evacuation, but enough to heal that wall a little bit and get up into that, that rectal flexure there. I don't like that spot there. With that said, here's a little groin, here's a little hip, and here's a little left ovary. Clean up your spleen a little bit. Here, uh, let me see where we're going here. Uh, bladder. Now look at this, the female area. Now this is, this is I'm going to guess, if this is not the vaginal wall, it's the rectal wall. If the rectal wall is squeezed in here, then that's vaginal wall. And I wouldn't take a chance. Michelle, I would douche with some heel all tea and pull, pull this out of here, if you can. Uh, once a day for a couple, three weeks, two or three weeks, be good for you to heal that wall. If it's a, and I wouldn't take a, a risk if it's vaginal or rectal because you, you have problems with both, it looks like to me. We move here now. You might not have any problem female-wise, but we're right here with bladder female. It's so close, it's risky to take a chance when you could just do a little uh, douching and it wouldn't matter. It'll clean and restore any health of that wall anyway. We're getting into the lower back here, of course, and then we get into the mid-back. So this is where the mid-back is going to be a little problematic here. Uh, this could be coccyx and not bladder. You could be good with the bladder, and this would be the coccyx, but, you know, it's just real close. You have to correlate that. This is the throat area. Uh, some weaknesses in the throat. This is definitely a sore throat area. Little thyroid. But look up in the forehead here. I don't like that at all. So we just got to get in there, sweetheart, and clean your body up a little bit. This is the right side of the eye. Now here's your kidney. See that? See that? That's sticking out like a sore thumb. And this is probably vaginal wall. So I would do that. Uh, douching. This, this, and you see how thick that lymph is around these, these lacunas? Or these patterns? They're thick. Meaning that the length is, 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 is locking them and breaking them down even further as we speak. Most of people's problems are always in their weaknesses. You know, you don't have problems where you have your strong, healthy tissues. You always have problems where your weaknesses are. And most of that is that genetics sets the road up for your experience this lifetime. Look at this, uh, this mid-back again. More evidence that you're having mid-back issues here, dear. This is probably coccyx. Uh, we're close to the bladder here. A little inflammation in the bladder wall here. We swing on around this way. We've got appendix and groin. That looks like the appendix. Big time genetic weakness there. If you still have it. That's what I was going to say. Do you think they're removed? Yeah, it's possible. It's possible yeah. to be removed. Yeah. yeah, good catch, Drew. Yeah. Good catch, man. This is gallbladder up in here. And then you start getting into the right arm. And uh, let me see here. This would be the breast area. And then here's a little bitty fella. See that little bitty fella hiding right up there? All right, this is the right eye. Here is the center of the pupil. Here's 12 o'clock, right? So this is just a little right at 12 o'clock right eye. What's that little baby hiding up there? She's called pituitary. She controls a women's menses. And what did she just say? Before my period, I get really grumpy, really bloated. I feel heavy and get cravings. That and that goes on and on and on. Uh, this can also impact the female by making her bleed too much or having a period irregularly or not at all. You know, all of those things. And that little baby there controls the thyroid and the female ovaries and the adrenals and, 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 and. Uh, Fifteen years ago, she had an accident and broke rib, punched my left lung. Oh, my God. 
you know, this is a this is a this is an interesting planet. Left lung. Well, the thing is, over in the lung area, this is the left lung. You just have a lot of congestion. I don't see any damage that would be not healing, but you got a lot of lymph going on. You just need to clean those lungs out. So we'll see what kind of eyes she has as she moves down the road of, of to Wellville. Let me see, uh, who is this? I haven't heard you speak about this yet, so I thought I would email you. I have had yellowish white gross on both my eyes since I was about 10 years old. The doctors say this condition is called, remember that one? Trigenium? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, this is all lipid. See how lipid look that is? A lipid look. Mm -hmm. Why would the body use lipids? And you see these fatty tumors on people's arms. You know, they, I've had people where their arms were like waves of an ocean. Why? What, what would cause a lipid to coagulate like that? Well, so we go back and we say, well, let's, let's see here. We've got uh, two sides of chemistry and everything is controlled by variations of pH. So when you see coagulation... Acidity. Acidity, mm -hmm. absolutely, absolutely. Why would you not have acidity appear in the eye as you would in the liver or the heart? You would have it everywhere. This is a systemic problem. If you have a lady with a breast tumor, believe it or not, she has a systemic lymphatic problem in her brain, in her lungs, and everywhere else. This is why they use the word metastasize, which is ridiculous and stupid. But why? Why? And you're going back to a systemic problem. Let's take a look at her. Lymph, 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 you know, that sort of thing. See all these lymph nodes here? Oh, this is the lymph node. Remember that outer circulation lymph node? Now, when you see a, a violet, a violet hue, and boy, she's almost getting one. When you see a violet hue, that is poor circulation with the blood. Now, blood is very impacted by lymph. We all know that. So, let's take a look at this eye. This is the right eye, of course. This is the kidney. I have a question. What sure. Liver and gallbladder. What about the liver? Here? Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. It. Yeah, but these are like these uh, trigeniums. I mean, oh, these, are, these yeah. are like gross. Now, if this was all yellow, absolutely. When you get backed up bile and things like mm -hmm. this, uh, absolutely, you get a jaundice look, no question about it. But this person, uh, I think this person needs a vibrancy to them, needs to get vibrant. And all this thick white stuff is just uh, congestion. This is in the thyroid area, this black spot there. I think that uh, needs to be, you need to regenerate the thyroid. This is the throat, a lot of mucus in the throat. As we get into the upper neck, we got a lot of congestion down the back, picking up lower back weakness, and then it picks up this kidney. Little prostate up there. If it's a male, what are we, a male? Age 23, duodenal ulcer, dime size ulcer, took medication for only a short period, then self-treated by coating stomach with milk. Gained 50 pounds over the next 25 years. Oh, coated, uh, coated an ulcer with the milk. I've heard of that. <laughs> just, oh, it's horrible. Oh, I just make, I think, age 40, uh, esophageal ring, a.k.a. what? Uh, throat can close up completely, allowing no food and sometimes no water down, especially meat or bread. Well, what do you think God's trying to tell you, man? Quit eating the meat and bread. <laughs> age 48, digestion issues, zero energy, food even... Uh, Food, even water at times. Look at that. Uh, just will sit in my stomach after eating and I'm uh, able to do nothing but wait for the food to digest. This is when you would use digestive enzymes, but change your diet radically to a fruit, berry, and melon diet because you're not digesting well. Here, here is the uh, pancreas. So there is a weakness in your pancreas and there's even a weakness in your gallbladder. So you're going to have trouble digesting fats and starches in a way here or, or carbohydrates in other words. Uh, to the degree, we'll see. You could measure that by undigested foods in your stool, but you've got a lot of lymph going on here a little bit in the wall so there is some malabsorption. I can't see what's going on here because of this, uh, this light. There's a little darkness in the stomach area, so my guess he's having a hard time breaking down proteins here a little bit, get away from proteins. Um, 
let me see here here's the the chest wall if this was a female the concern it is i think d the concern would be right breast this is the right breast area honey this isn't uh the, the, this year, you, you need to get your length moving. That's all I got to say, and get this right breast uh, a little more healthier because that is a weakness that I don't like. Don't see a lot. This is the length around the tissues in the chest wall, but uh, this is a big weakness there. This is the right arm, and then you move into these other areas here. Uh, this is D. I also have suffered from uh, bouts of bronchitis and pneumonia every few years. I've also suffered from very, very serious bout every 10 years. Well, you're, yes, because you keep treating it and stopping it with antibiotics. You, you have to stop that concept and start detoxing and clean these out. Mm -hmm. If you're cleaning out, there's no mucus to discharge. You won't have bronchitis or pneumonia. If you get away from this idiocy that pneumonia is pneumococcus and realize it's just mucus and, and that a, a symptom of pneumonia is just detoxification. What about the lung tea? Three lung tea, perfect. Three lung, uh, tea. Three lung tea and lungs number two. That'll help break, and I would definitely do that. And let this mucus break up. It'll break up, and it's gentle. It'll break up, and pretty soon you'll see a little more production, a little good take, dude. Really good take, man. You're getting good, man. And or lungs to tincture. Yeah. Together. You're getting good. I'm wondering from the photos of my eyes how serious my GI tract issue is currently. Well, we've just seen worse. I'll tell you, we've just seen a lot of chronic bowels. Hard for me to see your transverse colon D, but uh, you can see some inroads here even in the small bowel. You might be able to see. Yeah, let's see if side. we can look at this. Let's look at the left side again. There you go. Oh, again, we haven't even looked at it yet, right? This just shows high acidosis. Now, look at, look at this side. This, this is her weaker side. Look how much more lymph is involved here. Look at her sinuses are up here on sitting on top of the bow there. Real thick sinuses here. A little thick back in the cerebellum. Also in the medulla here, which is all her equilibrium and dizzy center. A little bit of a, a, right, a left ear weakness here. A, a left shoulder. You can see how, see how this bow kind of slides here. See that slide down on most of the bow? See how that comes close to the pupil there? Well, that means this splenic flexure is prolapsed down, has dropped down. Well, that's common. Unfortunately, these are common bowels out there. So what happens, though, this can fold over and crinkle the bowel. Really? This, this thing can yeah. actually fold over inside and, and, and severely restrict the, the flow of stool, absolutely. Oh, wow. So we might consider a parathyroid here. So let's look over here. Here's the thyroid gland. What's going on right in there? It looks to me like there's something sub separate from the bowel, a little spastic area there. That is the parathyroid area. Let's take a quick little look backwards and see the parathyroid. Well, the parathyroid and the thyroid are just one big ball of mucus on that side. Now, this is running up your back here. This is running up the back. Uh, this is mid-back, lower back. This is bladder, vaginal, rectal, and kidney. All these, see, you have this whole conglomerate right here involved here. And it all stems from the kidneys. But you'll notice, guys, see this little white, this little white uh, area around. That's the lymph system. Around that weakness. It's locking that weakness in place. Now, is that God's way of terminating a weakness eventually? I don't know. You can ask you all these type of questions mm -hmm. here. There's the adrenal. See that adrenal gland? Sitting right on top of this kidney. The kidney needs help. The adrenal gland needs help. And look at that lymph. This is where you get the adrenal cysts and the adrenal tumors and the kidney cysts and you get the polycystic uh, kidney bladder syndromes and all this kind of crap. This is all lymph, 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 lymph. And you can see why you get that because of the compromised lymph drainage in a weakened area. That's why cleaning and strengthening the body is the two key factors of Wellville. Her kidneys might not be filtering yeah, well, that's what that looks like, yeah. especially on this left side. Look at all the thick mucus up here. Yeah. It's just showing she's not filtering on this side at all there, Drew. A little groin on this side and the hip would be happier. A lot of lymph going on in the left ovary. And then we're up here in the left breast. So I don't like what I see in this lady's uh, breast tissues here on either side. And this one has got a lot of lymph associated with it as well. So I don't like what I see there. So, sweetheart, you need to really get on that and move that lymph. Get that skin. See the scurf rim? See that skin ring around the eye there? When you can see a, a differentiated ring, that's a scurf rim, which is a skin ring. 
weak skin. So she's holding, and she's holding her lymph nodes are staying swollen. My guess those lymph nodes have probably been swollen most of her life. Well, when you go into a highly acidic area that's been, been uh, acidic for years, that's a very hardened, thickened area. Notice some of the breast tumors are real hard and red. You don't want hardness of stuff, especially tissue, because that's more serious. It's harder to deal with. That, that area is getting very anionic. So, get on the kidneys, get on the adrenals, get on, do the, the, the protocols that we've been giving you to tear out on this body. And get that lymph drain, clean up your bowels, get the GI tract, get those sinuses. Anybody sick out there, go hug them. Give them, give them a kiss. See if you can't catch a cold and flu-like symptom. <laughs> How are we doing in time? Obviously, he's not going to get these up till tomorrow, right? Oh, yeah. Definitely. You know. We're doing good. Okay, here's left. This is Julie, and this is Julie's right eye. Now, again, let's go back to these blood vessels. Look at all these blood vessels. This is the sclera, blood vessels. Acidosis. She's got stress in all these tissues of her body. Lots of nerve rings. Yeah, look at these nerve rings. Yeah, look at them. All over the place. She's coming through her lungs. When you see nerve rings going through the lungs, you can plan on they either had asthma or they're heading towards something like that or COPD of some sort. This cuts right through the lungs. It cuts through most of the body here. So what would cause these rings? This little fella right here. See that little fella right there? That little fella is the right adrenal gland, and notice the thick lymph around it. See, you see that almost every time. And then there's the kidney down below. As you can see, there's a lot of, a lot of areas in, in her body that's showing up where the fibers are just loose, like this. So this is a K. Is this a C or a he? Who did I say? Oh, no, this is a she. Yeah, yeah Julie. Julie, you, 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 yeah. this is good, but... I have to say that I don't think this is a brown eye. Brown eye. It's too green. Now, that means that's a what color eye? Blue. This is why pictures are so important to have the colors right. Because you can't tell. It, to us, it's quite obvious this is a green eye. But uh, because the skin tone here isn't too far off. And when the skin tone isn't too far off, and you can tell by her eyelashes it's a female, but when the skin isn't uh, looking pretty good, then this picture isn't too far off from the way it should be. Uh, I don't know, but it is pretty green, and this is, and this could be orange. The colorations, this could be orange in here. This isn't a perfect white. Seems to be a lot of gray in here, so that definitely is going to change the cast of the color. But you can see all this thickened stuff here is length. You can really see that all this stuff is going to be length, right? Now, if we start down here, there's your adrenals. Where's the kidneys? Right below it. And see all the kidneys right there? Then you have her knee and her leg. Then you have her groin. Then you have her hip. Oh, wait a minute. Then you have her uh, uh, pancreatic and ovarian area. Wait, wait. Then you got her gallbladder, which is not very happy. Wait, wait, wait. Then we have her arm. See what I'm saying? We, we really got to get this body in a state of health. It's not bad because you've got pretty good strong fibers, but in places the fibers aren't not responding to you. You really got to get it in this body. Now, parathyroid. Could these fibers be uh, weakening because of the parathyroid? Absolutely. I believe that totally. Oops. I believe that totally. But over here on the right side again, we've got throat, we've got thyroid, parathyroid, we've got upper neck, we've got upper back, we've got, you know, lower back, we're moving around to the lower back here, we're going around to the, the bladder, vaginal wall. So a as we move around, we're starting to see we can find little weaknesses all around this eye. And look at this bow. Now, again, this color's off in this eye, so we can't get a real good picture of this. But if you follow this, you'll see some of the spastic areas. Here's a little bit of some radius solaris. Here's the pituitary up here. You notice these are going up into the brain here. She needs to get this lymph really moving. Here's the right ear. So we're seeing that this, this individual has to really apply herself, get these adrenals to turn on these kidneys and start pulling all this crap out of you. Here's the lymph nodes side. 
How does the colon? Help? Well, that's it. You know, it's it, when you look at the shape of it, uh, you you do see some spasticity here in places, but not overly bad. Here's a little bit of a prolapsing here, or a little ballooning here just before the hepatic flexure. This this uh, this the first flexure of the colon right there, ascending transverse. But up the ascending bowel, right down in the lower cecum area, down in here, the ileocecal valve is a little bit involved. That's the pancreatic area and the, and the gallbladder area. You see a little involvement there. little weakness. Weakness doesn't mean anything unless it really takes hold, other than that's your future problem. Yeah, more nerve rings here, of course. And you really get to see that thick lymph here. This is the left eye of Julie and um, really need to clean up her GI tract, no question, you're starting to sprout off these radius solaris. Um, here we get into the thyroid area, so there's a lot of thyroid going on here, there's a lot of pituitary going on here, so this can affect the female menses and menstruations, this can affect all kinds of things from the skeletal system to your, your body temperatures, to your skin, to, to uh, the, the heart rate. You're getting more throat here, so this is a sore throat ready to happen in a detox, no question about it. When you're, when you're a practitioner, you know that every one of these areas represents a weakness. There's a potential healing crisis in that area, that's all, that's, and you can't do anything about it. It's going to pull these areas out, and this is the, right, uh, the left kidney, the left knee, the leg there. Uh, a lot going on there. I need to clean all that. That kidney and adrenals, you really got to work on those and get these up, sweetheart. little rectal wall here. A little uterine vaginal wall, again, douching will help a great deal. Getting that lymph to filter through that kidney. And the same thing with the hip. Get the hip to dump its lymph, the leg to dump its lymph through that kidney. Is it very rare, a lot of people probably ask the same question too, um, that you see a very healthy kidney and adrenal glands? Is it rare? Yeah. This is a uh, 80... So let's look at hers a minute. This is Julie's kidney, mm -hmm. right, and adrenal. And this is an, she's 90-some now, and that's her kidney and adrenal. And I've got another lady in here that I think's better than she is. Great quality pictures, too. Yeah, look at this awesome. one. This is a, this is a, uh, this is a younger female. Look at her little kidney. Now, you see that white around that kidney? That's inflammation. It's hard to find someone without a kidney weakness. These are the, the smaller ones that you see. But it's a chance because of that, that kidney's not filtering, and maybe that's one of the gigs is that we have to clean the wall of the kidney to get the filtration up. I don't know. I know this gland on top. Now you can see the difference between her adrenal gland and Julie's adrenal gland. Well, one more. <laughs> Julie's adrenal gland. Mm -hmm. So Julie, of course, she's probably a lot younger. So she's really got to work on her health there. I don't know how old Julie is. I, I haven't taken much time, so I apologize, guys, to reading these because I'm just trying to get these answered in case you need to work on yourself. Uh, links to Irish picture. Let's see. Oh, Dr. Morris, my name is Julie. I am 15. She's 15 years old. That sweet girl. Look at that. You know what? I mean, this is what's going on in the world in our genes. So this girl is smart enough. These are the spiritual uh, young people of the world. Mm -hmm. She's 15. She's asking the right questions. She, she's going to be well. This is a fairly strong eye. But again, honey, you got to move your lymph. Get those adrenals up because there's your nervous system. And someone at your age, if you find a healthy eye at your age, you better go play the lotto that day because your chances of winning are going to be really good. Um, at 15, have been uh, transitioning to raw foods. This girl is a smart cookie at 15. Again, these higher souls are coming to the planet mm -hmm. to help us. I love that. With many, I tripped into my step. But uh, going stronger than ever now with newfound encouragement. Boy, this girl's something else. She's uh, done weeks one and two detoxification. Now, I'm awesome. proud she's doing a lot of watermelons. Mm -hmm. she, this girl, I'm proud of, uh, of young people like this. This is a 15-year-old thinking about her own health. They get it. They get it. I yeah, love that. I like that. The, the, this, is, this, is, this is our future, and I love this. These are the true healers of the world, too, because by the time she hits her 20, she's going to be one smart cookie. I've wondered recently if my irises indicate anything but about my tonsils. Okay, so let's look at tonsils. This is your left tonsil pattern. 
It doesn't look much different than the throat. Although your throat is much darker here, these tonsils are not very happy here, honey. So it really to make lymph nodes like tonsils happy, you got to get these kidneys filtering. This is going to take you right back. Here's the most important area you can work on is your, your, your kidneys and the adrenals. I would definitely spend some time with my thyroid. Uh, this is where I like glandulars. No offense to anybody. Here's your tonsil right side. See that, honey? So that's just saying that you were born with weak tonsils. And you can see that tonsil almost right there. See that, Drew? You can almost see that tonsil right there. And that tonsil swollen. And you see that length around the tonsil? So, Has she possibly had them taken out? Well, like, she could. I mean, she obviously has them. Or, yeah. she, let me see if I read on here. Uh, my no longer exist. No, you're right. My long, my no longer existing tonsils. Well, that's why, sweetheart. Uh, but you could have fixed them easy enough. You could have fixed them unless they were in a decay situation. Hard to tell with the coloration here off the decay level of that, but definitely of issue. And this one was just being chewed up with the acid. That's the. Uh, is this the right one? This is the right one. Let's see what else she's asking here. I had a tonsillectomy about four. Oh, that poor thing. Now, sweetheart, you want to get in this and clean up your bowels, get your sinus to drain, clean your head up now while you're young. Then having those tonsils removed will have minimal impact to the lymphedema of the head area. If not, you run the risk of having some degree of lymphedema in the head area because of them, and then that goes back to the neck. Well, here's your upper neck, and it isn't a lot happier than your tonsils were. So getting that upper neck in a state of health would be very important, and getting this brain cleaned out, and then you don't have to worry about no tonsils so much because you know the secrets of getting your lymph system moving and everything else. After having a terrible year of, of, of continuous strep throat infections. All right, so let's go back to strep throat and infections. Is that a bacterial problem or is that a lymphatic problem? Lymph. It's a lymphatic problem. There's no question about it. Take care of the lymphatic problem and you'll have no infection. Why? Because bacteria isn't infectious. Lymph is. Sewage is infectious. Bacteria only eat sewage for us. Uh, you guys wouldn't want to eat sewage, would you? Well, bacteria do for us. Thank you, guys. We appreciate that. I certainly don't want it. Somebody's got to eat it. I mean, or we wouldn't have to be able. To, we wouldn't be able to live on the planet because we we have an atom rearrangement scenario going on here. Mm -hmm. A removal part of my body going about healing that. Well, sweetheart, you might be able if you get raw right now. Uh, there might even be tonsil glandulars. I don't know if there are, but that would be the case to use a tonsil glandular. That's like a stem cell. You might, But there are cases, and a lot of them, of growing a second set of tonsils. I had a case in here, third set of tonsils. Huh. So you got fairly good genes. You get this cleaned up enough, you might grow those back, dear. And I would head down that road to do that. This time, you'll fix all the links that made them swell and, and have the problems in the first place. And you can see here that in the lymph, even in the tonsil itself. So this just all has to be cleaned up lymphatically and all that. Uh, let me see. Uh, I hope you, uh, maybe you'll have a chance to give my irises a read. You know, this, honey, I do your, uh, anytime. You, I just love people like you. Sweetheart, I, I applaud uh, you and all the young people tearing up this. I'm just so happy to see that. I can't even begin to tell you. Now, this is Matt. This is Matt. Matt. This is Matt's left and this is Matt's right. Well, that's obvious there. Ah, thanks, Matt, for the comment there. He loves our videos. Thank you so much, my friend. I hope this is, you know, we're all working together here. Just remember that we're a team. Thank you for putting the information out there. Oh, you're welcome, my friend. Uh, I have a few questions. Absolutely. I think I need to take some herbs to get my kidneys going. I can't get your herbs because I'm outside the U.S. Oh, no, we, 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 uh, internet orders. Oh, yeah, internet orders. We you got to call into the office yeah. for internet orders. All you guys ordering online, call, call the office for internet orders because we ship literally almost every country in the world except for those that signed on to the Codex. And then there's ways we can do that as well. They can contact Nature's Botanical Pharmacy. Yeah, okay. Yep. Yep. Nature's Botanical Pharmacy. Now, uh, 
But what would be the best herb to take for kidneys and adrenals? I've been mostly on fruits the last two months with some great results, but I'm going for gold here. Boy, I love that, Matt. Here's another guy tearing it up. Go, Matt. Make us men look good, man. Can you explain low B12 levels and how to get them into healthy levels? To tell you the truth, Matt, I've already covered this issue many times. It's an adrenal gland issue. Get your adrenals up and you'll never have a B12 problem ever again. Uh, I would move beyond that level of thinking. What did you come off of your fruitarian diet and why did you eat these days out of curiosity? I came off of my fruitarian diet when I came out of the woods. And then uh, I started opening, I opened up a health food store and I, that's what got me out of it. I started eating, uh, tasting things that I was ordering. It's supposed to be good. So I kind of slipped in from, this is what I did. I was an Arnold Errett and then slipped down and became a Bernard Jensen. That's what happened to me. Wow. Mm -hmm. awesome. If you want to know how to look at that in diet and everything, we all thought whole grains because they're, they, you know, they're whole grains. Raw milk, it's raw. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't that be good? It's raw. You know, it, it, we, we, we didn't realize a lot of those things earlier on. Uh, my diet's probably anywhere from uh, 60 to 90% raw. And I mean 60 to 90% raw. And, and then I do my cooked vegetables sometimes. I, I, you know, I do do some cooked food. Uh, all right, what well, color eye? <laughs> I don't uh, know. Yeah, come on. Here I go. All right, so Matt, let's take a look at this. If you look up here in your transverse colon, you have a little dipping. I think it's a little prolapsus as opposed to a spastic area, but again, you might have a little polyp growing up here. This might, this lesion right here, might be on the outside of the bowel wall. Maybe we were just talking about that. That might be on the outside of the bowel wall. That would be up there in the right ear area. It could be in the bowel wall, but I almost see a division around the whole thing. If you could see around the whole lesion, it's not just plugged into the bowel. It could be on the outside of the of the collar, and that would mean that would be the ear. We go up into the forehead. And here's the tonsil of Matt. Doesn't look much better than the tonsil of Julie. Then here's the thyroid, Matt. Parathyroid, just a lot of mucus there. You got some throat weakness going on here, Matt. So someone was saying something about swelling of the throat uh, past here in these. When you have a swelling, you know the lymph is swelling. When you eat something that is uh, mucosa uh, responsive, like a protein that the body doesn't want, like dairy proteins and stuff, mm -hmm. you're going to only add mucus to an already swollen area. So you can get the throat so swollen that you can't hardly swallow from it, and real bad. And, and uh, you know, it, this goes, works right up the bowels, right up the esophagus, right up into the mouth. And what are we seeing? Tons of esophageal cancer, tons of mouth cancers. We're seeing it because the lymph is really getting backed up in humans now. Yeah. Now it's just all over the friggin' place. Now when we look at Matt's bowel wall, see the cholerate? See that white around the wall? Again, there's, there's malabsorption. Look at that malabsorption ring right around the pupil. You can see a stomach ring on Matt. So we know that that stomach ring is a little hazy, but a little dark. So Matt's had this for a while, a little burning of the stomach maybe going on, getting a little dark in the stomach here. So I'd definitely stay away from all proteins. you got to anyway to clean this up and uh, go in that direction. Now, this is the throat. There's a little weakness. See all that white around that little spot? Somewhere in the throat. This is the upper neck, upper back area there, the C-spine. Going down into the T-spine, going down into the lumbar spine. Look at that bladder weakness right. Well, I'll say this. That's probably the bladder, that real thick white stuff. And this is the kidneys right there. It's really close right here with a little eye, so everything's going to be kind of crammed in here. This is the leg, Matt. A lot of lymph going on in this upper femur. Needs to drain through the kidney here. And then a little groin weakness going on. He came in with a hip, probably associated with the kidney again. Now, look at that little spot right there. What do you think that little black spot is right there? See how that stands out? See that, Drew? It just stands out like a sore thumb. Well, let's look here. Here's 6 o'clock. Here's 7 o'clock. Here's 8 o'clock. Uh, here's 9 o'clock. Gallbladder. If this is your gallbladder, Matt, you really need to work on that. 
You yeah, really need to work on that. Mm -hmm. So let me show you this. This is 8 o'clock. This is 8 o'clock. Your, your right hand is at 8 o'clock. But what's just before 8 o'clock tucked up there by the bow? The gallbladder. And here's 8 o'clock. And what's tucked up here? Gallbladder. And that's pretty dark, Matt. So you want to get in there with the, uh, the uh, liver and gallbladder herbs. You want to use the GI broom and clean this out. You might open up a can of worms here, Matt. Can you but you've got to do it anyway. Can you start on the first two weeks of the detox kit? Huh? The, the first yeah, weeks? you would use that, but yeah. I would use that. I would use the liver gallbladder for several months because this here is, see how black that is, Drew, mm -hmm. and how that's like a hole? See, that's like a hole. That means there's decay in that gallbladder. Well, when you start opening up the lymph system, mm -hmm. you could open up a big can of worms, like the lady we're dealing with now with the elevated liver enzymes. So she started detoxing. It just wham. Well, look at that liver gallbladder and look right there. So if you do, you do, man. You just have you can't worry about it because you're going to have trouble there anyway if you don't open it up. And now's the time to open that baby up and, and try to get that healed up before anything happens to you. There's also a liver issue going on there as well. And you're probably going to open up a can of worms there, but I would open it up anyway. Upside down. There you go. Definitely Alzheimer's. Yeah. It's time for me to go. Find me a nice place, would you? And I want like fountains and right on the beach. Just put me in a club med and just leave me. I'm good. <laughs> oh, but it got to have some orange trees. Maybe. Oh, wait a minute. I got to have some grape trees. Well, 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 wait a minute. I got to have some mango trees. But You're losing focus. <laughs> focus, Robert. Focus. I want to go home. Now, Again, more of this bowel cholera interstitial lymphatic constipation. Now, this is the uh, sigmoid flexure. This is where your descending bowel goes down, your, your flexure here that curves you around and goes down the sigmoid. Then here's the rectal flexure and out the rectum. Well, right here at the rectal flexure, you can see that you have some problems. Some ballooning of the bowel. You got a lot of inflammation in the wall of the bowel, so you got to get that all cleaned out there, Matt. This is the, uh, well, they're right there at the uh, lung area there. A little congestion in the shoulder. This is the upper neck, uh, back area there, the C-spine, more T a little bit, and then down into your lower back. Kidneys look better on this side, but a lot of lymph going on, a little prostate mat. So you want to be careful because you got a lot of lymph going on in that prostate. could give you some prostatitis. This is, let's see, that's 6 o'clock. Ooh, left leg, right? Six o'clock, bam, left leg. So there's a left leg. Mm -hmm. See that little bitty fellow? That's, that's either the knee or the groin. See that little bitty fellow right there? So this whole left leg, man, is weak. So you got to get the kidneys filtering, bottom line. Then you can strengthen these legs and, and hips up and stuff. But not bad, and that's pretty good shape. You just got to clean up that bowel, get better absorption, uh, which is what? Number two on the list of one to four. See, I keep giving the answers. Why do I do that? Uh, a lot of congestion. Move those limps, Matt. Hope that's helpful to you guys. Now, we're getting down there. We've got, uh, we've already did this one, right? This was Zoe again. Yep. Yep. Zoe, here we are again. This is a little bit bigger picture. Man, you're not talking about the cholesterol there. The drug deposits, you know, all this thick lymph. This is definitely a blue eye here. And then again, she's got this. And the violet color, mm -hmm. right? Well, it, no? oh, thanks. I'm going back to that. <laughs> You'll give me a bottle of brain and nerve, would you? And upper sir. Yeah. See that? Just what Drew's saying. You and see? Adrenals. Yeah. You see that? That that uh, violet violet. You didn't see it as, bad, as much in the other ones of hers, but see that violet look? No, that one stands out more. That stands out more. See how it coincides with the cholesterol look? Mm -hmm. 
that's definitely vascular now. But to clean this cholesterol out and to get improved circulation, you definitely want to hit the lymph system. This is a case where I definitely would keep them on circulation formulas. And you could keep them on a cayenne garlic, like a cayenne garlic butcher broom formula. Mm -hmm. It'll just keep their vascular system dilated and keeping blood moving around because these are strokes and heart attacks waiting to come here. No offense, but this, you have to think of this. You have to understand what's going on. Oh, Alex, I don't have a right eye, my man. I only have a left eye. What side is that? Okay. Mm -hmm. This is Alex. Fantastic. Would you mind taking a look at my eye picture? Just one eye. I only have a good picture of my left eye. I am currently taking the kidney and adrenal formula. Not consistently, though. I have had really bad acne for years. So, look at acne. Let's stop there and look at acne for a minute. What's this? Scurfrim. This is the skin. And look at this thick, thick around this scurf rim. Look at this thick, thick. Uh, your skin, you were probably born with this weak skin, uh, Alex, and it's just not allowing it to breathe. If I was going to look at that, I'd want to go to what would control sweating. Wouldn't we want to go to the thyroid gland because it controls body temperature? Thyroid adrenals. Exactly. Temperature. So we want to go thyroid. Look at thyroid. Here is the here is the left here is the thyroid gland, left side. Mm -hmm. So here's the left thyroid nodule. See those weaknesses? So yeah. Yeah, that probably is why the skin ring. So you get that thyroid up, work on your skin, and you'll get rid of that ring around there. Get this lymph moving because you've got great eyes here. Look how nice those fibers are mostly. You have a few of these, so what? Look at the average person has a bunch. So this is a good strong eye here, Alex. You're really good here, but you've got a lot of lymph. Look at these lymph nodes here. And this is your lungs, chest wall. You know, so you really want to get to look at your sinuses up here. See how your bowels kind of swinging down here like that? That you have the prolapsus. This is near the splenic flexure, and even the splenic flexure is a little prolapse. That would go over here to the parathyroid gland. So you got thyroid and parathyroid mat to work on. Here's Matt's tonsils above the thyroid gland. See that one? Not real happy either. But Matt's got good genes here, guys. Love them. Here's the middle back. Got a little thing going on in the middle of the back. A lot of lymph stagnation in the middle of the back. And then you start picking up some weakness as you go down toward your lumbar area. Looking at the kidneys here, here's the kidneys. And you got a little weakness in those kidneys. And then the, the adrenals look like a wad of mucus. Then you pick up a little groin, hip, a lot of inflammation in the hip area here, the left testicle, that sort of place. And we can go on up here to prostate then, and we go to the lower back and bladder. So I hope that helps you, Alex. Hit your lymph system, hit your kidney, but your adrenals are more important than I see here. I don't have your right kidney, so I don't know. Always hit your kidney and adrenals simultaneously. With you, I'd focus on the thyroid, parathyroid gland as well. Uh, and heck on those limps. Definitely spend some time with the skin formula uh, and, and open that up there. But not, not too bad. I love that. That's a, a good strong eye picture, Alex. Great picture. Yep, great picture. Now we got one more. One more. Now, this is Sophie. Hi, Robert. Sophie, uh, <laughs> the Frenchy makeup artist. Uh, I hope you remember me. I do. I'm 26 years old. Uh, celiac disease, leaky gut, cystitis interstitial, and infections. Yesterday I made I make iridology just to send my pictures in order to, to heal. I hope it's my first wish. I'm so, so tired. Oh, my God. And uh, Listen, sweetheart, you'll be okay, honey. Uh, it's love from Paris. You'll be okay, sweetheart, but I'll tell you what. In looking at these eyes, Sophie, what do we see here? What's the first thing we see? Heavy, heavy lymphatics, honey. Real heavy lymphs. So here's the Brits and the cheeses and the milks. Well, here's what we got. Look at all this thick lymph here. Now, colors could be better because I don't know what I can say about this outer violet ring. I don't think that shows poor circulation in this case. I think it's the picture. There's no cholesterol ring. So I think we're good there. 
But uh, there's a lot of lymph. Now, you've got some good, strong genes, Sophie, but look mm -hmm. at your lymph. Your lymph has totally turned your eyes to a yellowish. Uh, now, look at her left eye. You'll begin to see where I mean about blue. So let's look at her Sophie's left side of her body first. Remember, left eye, left side of the body, right eye, right side of the body. You see down in here this blue, uh, more blue. So you know Sophie's dealing in a blue eye that's rapidly turning yellow-green. Uh, I could probably safely say this is sulfur in Sophie. How's it looking through the camera there? More orange? More orange. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I'd say definitely Keep sulfur. The lighting on the yeah. Camera. Now, look here. We're up in the brain here. Sophie, you've got to clean your bowels up sooner than later. You get up here with upper circulation and brain and nerve. You got one, two, and this is a very big. Oh, I'm sorry. I know, yeah, I was off there. I know that. I just want to see it. No, I know. I had it turned on an angle, and it's like. As you may. Yeah, this is a cerebellum in here. Hard to see with the shine here. But I tell you right here, I don't like this spot at all, sweetheart. Don't freak out, but get up there with upper circuit brain and nerve, nerve and start healing. And move these limps. These are all on your bowel wall, so you really got to clean up your bowels here. You see how your prolapse down here, you get real small here, then you get bigger here. So you really got to clean up this GI tract. That'll help you get up in the brain quicker and easier. We get over here, and I'm probably in a right show. Uh, excuse me, left shoulder. This notice this. It looks like it's on the outside of the bowel. If it's on the outside, it's probably uh, related to the left shoulder. Get moving to the ear area, or or bronchial trunk, bronchial trunk, uh, or that's in the bowel wall, and that's a little polyp or a little uh, area of weakness there. A lot of lymph, sweetheart. Now, getting in here, here's your, here's your left leg. Here's your kidney. See those two spots right there? That's your kidney weakness. A lot of lymph going on. Adrenals, can't even hardly see them. A lot of lymph. Here's groin. Here's hip. Hip or, actually, this is almost to the left ovarian area, the left ovary. Here's the spleen. Probably want to clean up the spleen a little bit. This is white blood cells, platelets. So I would definitely go on the spleen formula after you work on your lymph a while. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, this is rectal wall here a little bit. Bladder. And this is a lot of lymph in the vaginal wall and uterine area. Want to get that lymph moving as soon as possible. If you had atypical cells in the past, douche. Lower back, mid back, and we're moving around to the throat, thyroid. See how dark these are, sweetheart? Get them out of there. Get those out of there. And they go right into the stomach. You have to heal the stomach up, the bowel up, before you're going to get the brain up. So you've got to get into that area and move that area, sweetie. With a lot, lot more light in here, you can really see how thick this lymph is on her. Now... This is Sophie's right eye. What is 6 o'clock in the middle? Right here. That's Sophie, that's your right knee. And I tell you what, that's too dark. I don't like that at all. You got to move this lamp. Look at here. Look at your kidney here, Sophie, on the right side. Real important, honey, to get into that kidney and heal that up. Clean, get those adrenals cleaned out. This is the knee. You got deterioration in that knee, whether you feel it or not. <clears throat> Excuse me. Detoxification should pull that weakness out, but you might not like how you're going to feel in that knee when it happens. If you don't unaware of that knee, I my personal feeling is you probably will become aware of it before your detox is done. Uh, moving over here to the, let me see here, six o'clock. So we're hip. We're definitely uh, uh, right hip here. So we, here we go. We got right hip. We've got the upper femur a little bit. We got the knee deteriorating kidney. That's all tied together here. All tied together. I think this is a sore spot. It's right in the lymph node, though. A little bit of a, a, a pancreatic weakness. This is the left, I mean the right ovarian weak, uh, area right over here. Here's gallbladder. Now, this gallbladder isn't real happy. 
and there's the pancreas right beside it. So your pancreas and gallbladder need some work. The nice thing about herbs is that the liver, gallbladder herbs work well for the pancreas. I would spend a few months on that, definitely cleaning up the bowel, get in my gallbladder and pancreas and clean that up. So I think the liver gallbladder formula will be enough. Our new pancreatic formula will be different than blood controlling herbs, blood sugar controlling herbs, so it'll be better for the pancreas. Uh, this could be bronchial trunk, although I'm getting up to the upper, upper chest wall on the right side. It's not the breast area, which is more there, which you see some things, but this is upper chest wall. Then we enter into the bronchial trunk. Now look at this, sweetheart. This is your bronchial trunk. I, this, you know, I don't have these mapped out and I could be at right shoulder. If you're having right shoulder problems, that's going to be that one or this area here. I don't have these mapped up real close to tell you on point. This is a, a, a bronchial trunk that is deterioration. We don't want that. We got to clean those lungs out. We got to clean the bronchial trunks out. You got to move your lymph. Then you have another little spot here in the right brain. Here's your pituitary, very chronic. So, bottom line, you got good genes in most places, but you got some spots that are very concernful. Get moving on this, Sophie. I don't care what. Get raw, get get fruit, berries, and melons, and get in some upper circuit and nerve. Get the GI broom, clean up these bowels, get the lymphatic one capsules, uh, stomach and bowels. I would go after liver gallbladder for sure. I would definitely pound my kidneys and get this healed up. You might want to go on the bones formula uh, just because of this and see if you can inspire some healing. You got a lot of acidosis around that knee, going to be hard to heal for a while. The bones formula might come in and help you a little bit. Definitely check my parathyroid. Got some swelling in the throat, a lot of congestion in that throat, a little upper neck weakness. So that pretty much, uh, I think, shows it. And we did the left eye, right? Yeah. So that that that's the value of iridology and, and, and how you use those things. Thank you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. I think that's why iridology is so beneficial and so helpful. I've had people where I've seen a, their knee and serious problem. I don't feel it. And before the year's out, bam! So these are some of the things, you know, we have to, we have to use this science for to help us see. Well, we're pretty much at the end of the day here. So I'm going to sign off here. And it's so good to talk to each and every one of you. I hope those of you that are working your health issues through that you stay strong. Stay with knowledge, truth. Keep your lives simple. Right now, that's a battle between mind and consciousness. Uh, get out of your minds and, and just live. Start applying simplicity to your life, and you'll be so much happier. But spend time for yourself. I want each one of you to start loving yourselves and spend time with yourselves. Because after all, you're here as a channel and a representative of the one. So each of us being the one is experiencing our lives in individual pieces. And so we're each enjoying our individualities, but all of us as individuals become the one in consciousness. So you just have to remember that. And when you see someone, know that they too are a God in, in, in embodiment in an individual form. They might have bad attitudes. They might not have the journey you like. That's okay. Don't have to align yourself with that. But always give that love to everything on the planet because you just want to be pure love. And then nothing can hurt you because you're pure God, you're pure love. And anybody that attacks that, their, their, their thoughts just bounce back to them. So you all have fun. It'll, it's a great pleasure. I'll try to come in tomorrow and really point on some of your questions and we'll get down that road too. But I love all you guys. You guys are kicking butt. I hear all these things coming from all you guys. Keep it up. Uh, tear this up. We're changing the planet. Each one of you, just remember this, each one of you is responsible for changing the consciousness of this planet. And it's about time. So have fun. You have a great night. And I'll be talking to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.